Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the bustling city of Columbus, Ohio. There's a growing problem of gang violence and a rising number of murders. Despite the grim statistics, Governor John Messer proudly claims that crime rates have dropped significantly, bringing a sense of peace to the troubled city. But not everyone is convinced. There's a stir of controversy as protests erupt over a proposed pipeline project. Governor Messer announces there will be an independent environmental review, which sparks excitement within the Hill family. Abby Hill and her family are particularly interested because Abby's mother, Vivian Hill, is deeply involved in the environmental audit conducted by the EPA. However, tragedy strikes the family when Vivian goes to the airport to pick up her husband, Stanley Hill, who is returning from a job interview. In the airport parking lot, a stranger approaches them, asking for money. This seemingly innocent encounter takes a dark turn, as it escalates into a brutal attack on Stanley, and a fatal stabbing of Vivian by an assailant with a distinctive fly tattoo. The brutal incident leaves Stanley devastated and in shock. Determined to seek justice for the horrific crime, he reports the criminals to detectives Gibson and Walker. However, the detectives' questions about his relationship with Vivian irritate Stanley, leaving him frustrated and confused in the face of his immense grief. Overwhelmed by the loss, he makes a dramatic decision to flee from Vivian's last rites at the church, capturing the attention of the entire nation. Governor Messerv expresses his condolences, and promises to assist in the pursuit of those responsible for this terrible and heartbreaking crime. The next day, at the detective's request, Stanley returns to the police station to identify the individuals responsible for the horrifying incident. He successfully points out the real culprit, but to his dismay, the detectives decide to release the attacker, citing a lack of concrete evidence. This leaves Stanley feeling utterly helpless. In his despair, he decides to confide in his daughter, Abby. Enraged by the killer's freedom, Stanley stumbles upon a hidden black envelope, filled with incriminating items from his own past. Fueled by anger and a deep desire for justice, he contacts his former comrade, Dennis. Dennis warns him against seeking revenge, fearing the consequences it might bring. Unmoved by the warnings, Stanley joins forces with Dennis, and together, they set out to track down the culprits. Their first lead takes them to a club, where Stanley spots Nathan, one of the attackers, giving Vivian's stolen purse to his girlfriend. This encounter leads to a tense confrontation, during which Stanley manages to subdue Nathan, who hints at a hidden motive behind Vivian's murder. As they grapple with what to do next, an unexpected turn occurs. A gang member secretly records the disposal of Nathan's body, and informs the notorious crime lord, Lemmy K, about the situation. In response, Lemmy K orders Charlie Fly, the man who killed Vivian, to eliminate both Stanley and Dennis. Facing this imminent threat, Dennis takes Stanley to his hidden basement, filled with training equipment and an arsenal of weapons from their past, preparing for the impending danger. Using a broken phone found on Nathan, Dennis hacks into it, and discovers a contact link to the zombie tattoo shop, where a man named Lars works. This connection appears to be crucial in unraveling the truth behind the tragic incident, bringing them one step closer to understanding the motives behind the murder. As the plot unfolds, Lemmy K, the formidable crime lord, takes action. He reaches out to detectives Gibson and Walker, demanding that they find the culprits responsible for the deaths of his gang members. A startling revelation comes to light, the corrupt detectives are involved in a dark alliance with Lemmy K. They've agreed to protect his men from prosecution, in exchange for keeping silent about a damning video that could expose Governor Messer's son. This video is nothing short of shocking. It captures the governor's son committing a heinous crime, involving the murder of his girlfriend, providing her with dangerous crystal drugs. Lemmy K uses this incriminating footage as leverage, warning that he will release it to the public if the detectives fail to capture those responsible. Amidst the chaos of this investigation, Detective Gibson meets with Governor Messerv, and discloses Lemmy K's involvement in the case. The governor, now aware of the potential scandal and the gravity of the situation, urges the detective to uncover the truth behind the recent crimes. The governor is determined to prevent the release of the damaging video, but the identity and motives of the perpetrators remain shrouded in mystery, intensifying the urgency of the investigation. In the midst of the ongoing investigation, Stanley devises a plan to confront Lars, who works at the zombie tattoo shop. However, when he arrives there, he finds a different employee. Sensing trouble, Dennis hurries to the shop upon hearing an alarm, and is met with Charlie and his gang. In a heated showdown with bullets flying, Dennis showcases his skills, ultimately defeating the gang, although Charlie manages to escape. Back to Stanley, while getting an I Am Wrath tattoo on his back, he provokes Lars about Charlie, leading to a tense confrontation. 
Lars, unwilling to disclose Charlie's whereabouts, pushes Stanley to the brink of rage. In a moment of fury, Stanley slits Lars' throat. To make matters even more complicated, Stanley seizes Lars' drug shipment. With Dennis's help, they discreetly dispose of the bodies. Haunted by a profound sense of guilt and grief of his past as a gangster and the tragic loss of Vivian, Stanley seeks solace in a church. There, he bears his soul to a priest, confessing his sins and desperately seeking forgiveness. Amidst the ongoing chaos, Abby arrives at Stanley's home, with the intention of collecting her mother's belongings. To her shock, she finds guns and gang-related items strewn about the premises. Before they can make their exit, they are suddenly ambushed by Charlie and his henchmen. Gunfire erupts as they shoot at Abby's car. Stanley rushes to the scene just in time to clarify the situation, but Abby is understandably furious with him. Over at the governor's mansion, Messer becomes aware of more deaths within Lemmy K's gang, and he realizes the need for professional assistance in tracking down those responsible. As the situation continues to escalate, the governor takes steps to address the growing crisis. Meanwhile, Lemmy K is seething with anger, discovering that his precious drug shipment has been stolen. He issues a stern warning to Charlie, who finds himself in hot water. Unbeknownst to Charlie, Stanley, hidden in the basement of a barbershop, manages to pilfer Charlie's contact information from Lars' phone. In a clever move, he tricks Charlie into heading to a Korean club, where both Stanley and Dennis are ready to confront him. Inside the tense atmosphere of the VIP room at the Korean club, Charlie's paranoia reaches its peak. Chaos erupts as Stanley corners him, demanding answers. In a moment of panic, Charlie accidentally reveals that Lemmy K was the mastermind behind the tragic event. Fueled by anger and determination, Stanley shoots Charlie, ending his life. Armed men close in on Stanley and Dennis. With unwavering teamwork, they manage to escape, narrowly avoiding capture. Back in the basement hideout, Dennis unveils a shocking truth about the formidable crime Lord Lemmy K. Fearing for the safety of his family, Stanley decides to relocate them to a hotel. Upon returning home, Stanley makes a startling discovery. A report suggests that Vivian was coerced by Governor Messerv to conceal the risks of water contamination associated with the pipeline project. Listening to a voicemail left by Vivian further confirms his suspicions, that her murder was orchestrated to bury the findings of her environmental review. As the pieces of this intricate puzzle fall into place, Stanley is more determined than ever to uncover the truth and seek justice for his wife. Lemmy Kay and his gang launch a surprise ambush on Abby and her family. Under immense pressure, Abby manages to send a coded message to Stanley, alerting him to the dire situation. Without wasting a moment, he quickly contacts Dennis for a much-needed backup. Arriving at the scene, Stanley and Dennis find themselves face to face with Lemmy Kay and his menacing crew, leading to a tense standoff. Abby is captured, and in the heat of the conflict, Dennis is shot, but his resilience prevails as he recovers and manages to take down Lemmy Kay's assailant. Stanley engages in a fierce battle with Lemmy Kay, determined to extract information. The fate of Vivian's case and the safety of Abby and her family hang in the balance, as they push forward in their quest to bring those responsible to justice. However, just as Lemmy Kay is on the verge of revealing the true perpetrator, corrupt Detective Gibson takes ruthless action and guns him down, attempting to keep the truth hidden. Undaunted by the pervasive corruption around him, Stanley remains resolute in his quest, and refuses to compromise his integrity. A tense standoff ensues as Gibson's backup detective, Walker, makes a move, only to be swiftly taken down by Dennis. Gibson attempts to negotiate with Stanley, but his efforts prove futile. Stanley handcuffs Gibson to the steering wheel of his car, with Walker confined in the trunk. He compels Gibson to drive him to Governor Messer's mansion, where a sinister web of deception is gradually unveiled, setting the stage for a climactic confrontation. During the tense drive, Gibson unveils the shocking truth about the governor's involvement in the criminal activities, shedding light on why Lemmy Kay and his men have remained beyond the reach of the law. The revelations weigh heavily on Stanley, as he contemplates the extent of corruption. Upon arriving at the mansion, Gibson pleads with Stanley to release him, so he can have a word with the governor. Instead, Stanley incapacitates Gibson with a powerful blow to the head. Stanley takes steps to neutralize the guards, and sets a trap for Gibson, rigging the car to explode, giving Walker a narrow escape from the trunk. With the obstacles removed, Stanley faces minimal resistance, as he dispatches the remaining security personnel. Armed with determination, he storms into the mansion, ready to confront Governor Messerf, and unearth the full extent of the conspiracy. A ferocious battle unfolds inside the mansion, with Messerv initially gaining the upper hand, holding a shotgun to Stanley's head. However, in a shocking moment of revelation, 
Messerf confesses to the murder of Stanley's wife. He explains that he killed her because she refused to participate in his corrupt schemes. Overwhelmed by a mixture of grief and rage, Stanley turns the tables, and fatally stabs Messerf, bringing a dramatic end to their confrontation. News of the break-in at the governor's residence quickly spreads, attracting a swarm of police officers who surround the mansion. Despite narrowly surviving, thanks to a bulletproof vest provided by Dennis, Stanley is taken into police custody. Fearing that her father may disappear forever, Abby sneaks into his hospital room, for a heartfelt farewell hug, marking a bittersweet conclusion to this gripping and tumultuous series of events. Later at night, two police officers are stationed outside Stanley's hospital room, one of them Walker, who has been demoted to patrol duty. However, he harbors sinister intentions, and enters Stanley's room with the intent to eliminate him. In a shocking twist, Abby had secretly left a gun disguised as a hug, allowing Stanley to defend himself. In this unexpected turn of events, Dennis, disguised as a doctor, plays a crucial role in facilitating their daring escape. Stanley and Dennis manage to slip away and flee to Sao Paulo, Brazil, in a bid to elude the corrupt authorities, and find refuge. Some time later, Abby receives a postcard from her father, assuring her of his safety, and expressing gratitude for her invaluable help. With his quest for justice and vengeance fulfilled, Stanley finally finds the peace and closure he so rightfully deserves. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.